Well, hello, this is a little different. I'm doing this from my kitchen. And by the way, I'm wearing my t-shirt. <laughs> but anyway, I'm doing this from my kitchen because uh, it's flipping hot outside. And I have the air conditioner going and uh, the audio was bad in the living room. Or else I turn the air conditioning off and it's very hot. So I, I, I kind of faked a set here in the, in the kitchen. And obviously I've been doing some cooking too. But... <laughs> <laughs> Not today because it's too hot. But anyway, um, what I want to talk about today are is a fake Parker sonnet. Uh, this was requested. Um, I don't usually do requests, but I thought it'd be interesting just to delve a little more deeply into the specifics of a fake. Uh, so I have a fake Parker sonnet and I'm going to compare it to I own two real ones. Uh, this is not a discussion of what's too closely imitated, what's a homage, you know, I, that's not this discussion. This is a fake. It claims to be a Parker sonnet, and it is not. So let's dive into it. So here it is, the Parker sonnet. Or is it this one? Or is it this one? Whoops. One of them's trying to escape because he doesn't want to be in this video. Uh, so which one is the real Parker sonnet? Well, two of them are. One of them's fake. I'll just throw into the mix. Uh, right away. This is not a Parker sonnet and it doesn't claim to be. It does share a design that was on Parker sonnets a few years ago, but this is a Bayor. Um, we can have a separate discussion over what category this belongs in, but it does not belong in the category of fake, so it doesn't belong in this video. This is a fake. And one of the problems with fake fountain pens is you can't always tell that they're fake. They look just like the real thing. Uh, unless you get them side by side, it's hard to tell. Unless you look real closely at the details. Uh, one of the links I have in the video description actually shows uh, fakes of a few brands. So this is a real Parker Sonnet and I will try to keep the real thing on top and the fake on the bottom. This is also a real Parker sonnet. The difference, well, I think you can see the difference. This top one is the newest of the three. It is also a gold nib pen. So it's got two things going for it. One is the, um, because it's newer, it has the redesigned trim ring here. This is a little different. And uh, the fletching on the arrows is going to be a little bit different. Uh, but for the sake of comparison, we're going to need all three of these pens. Um, but because the gold one is a different animal and it's a redesign, we will uh, set it aside for now. And we'll just focus on these two. Now, I will admit I filmed this once and I used a different camera and it was a fail and a half. So I'm trying again with this camera. We'll see. Uh, so both sonnets, the real and the fakes, remember the real one is on top, the fake is on the bottom, have a little black plug in there. Uh, fit, oops. And uh, my magnet that's for later in the video really likes these metal sonnets. <laughs> uh, has this black plug. The gold one does not. I don't, I don't know if the modern steel nibs do, but I know it does not have a plug. But I think the plug has been discontinued as an element of design. Uh, turn them around. They both have a black finial. The, the gold one has a gold finial. I suppose you can tell that it's gold. But now these both have a black finial. What's different about them? Wait, well the autofocus does its thing here. All right, so you can tell sometimes with fakes, what I was reading is that they're not centered, but I think my fake is centered pretty well, but you can tell it's just not as nicely molded. Another thing you can tell, the uh, real one versus the fake one. Again, the fake one's on the bottom. It's a rougher finish on the fake. Actually, kind of an attractive finish. I, I do like it. <laughs> Do I dare admit that? But it's, you know, not as nice. It's more easily damaged. Here's a, a scratch in it. Uh, you, you can also see 
Okay, fake on the left, real one on the right. You can also see that the lettering on the fake is not as even as it is on the real one. So there's Parker. Sonnet. I think they did pretty well with the sonnet. I was looking at some of the fakes online and they were showing like, uh, you know, you could tell somebody's not an English speaker. Um, they had serifs on some of the fonts and, or typefaces, I guess these would be. And uh, they were going the wrong way. The France, oh, the fake France seems to be missing part of the tail. And a date code. So the fake has a IIIQ and the real one has an IIL. So the fake was apparently made, where's my notes? I did write this down, I promise. Oh, there they are. I moved them because I thought I was done filming. All right. So my, um, the Q and the uh, L, those come from, they spell out quality pen over a number of years. Uh, the mine, the I-I-L is the second quarter of 1993, as I interpret it. That doesn't seem right, but anyway, who cares? The I-I-I-Q would be the first quarter of 1990. Uh, if we look at the arrows, Parker is known for its arrow clip. I think the fletching on the Parker, again, the Parker's on your right, is a little bit better. Uh, we won't compare because the modern redesign changed the fletching. I actually like the older version better, but that's a personal choice. And the cap band, this trim band has changed a bit on the modern. It's wider and... Well, just different. All right, so we've got some differences on the outside. Now, what about size? Oops, I'm not under the camera. That's always helpful to be under the camera. So as far as size, you guys stay still, won't you? I'd say the fake is a little bit longer. And if I bring in my gold one, A little bit different design but I I think it's about the same length as the original so of course if we're gonna measure stuff for real we have to use metric so this looks like a hundred thirty four millimeters long the fake and the real one doing my best here you know ideally I'd have like a giant caliper or something to do this but I don't 132 millimeters so maybe two millimeters difference gold one 132 millimeters okay well, what about mass so I'm a science teacher I'm allowed to have this at home so let's turn it so you can actually sort of read the scale so the fake 25 grams The real, whoops, I almost grabbed the, the gold one. The real one, 25 grams. And just for giggles and snorts, let's put on the gold one. 30 grams. What's up with that? Well, you'll see here in just a minute. It is a little bit different beast. So we've looked at what's outside the pen. Uh, I just want to note also um, with the fake... I don't know if you can tell. So let me focus on it. But some of this gold is coming off. It's not doing that on the Parker. I've inked the fake up once for one video. Uh, the Parkers get inked up quite frequently. All right. Oh, that was not satisfying at all. You know, you just kind of bleh off. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a nice click. But it was definitely a decisive year. The cap is off. The cap is on. The cap is off. And they're a little condensate, condensate because I uh, filmed this once already with a different camera. So uh, I had to wash them off and try again. And I have to drink some water here because it's hot out and 
also not in my regular set because the uh, air conditioner is there and it's really hot in here if I don't run that. Okay, so let's inspect sections here. Now I would say it looks like this trim ring maybe is a little thicker on the real one, but it's hard to tell. Down here at the around the nib, the trim ring, this trim ring is thicker on the fake. This is the real one. Oh, but the nibs don't look alike. I've got a weird oblique nib on my real one. And again, that's water in the feed. So the problem is when I bought this real one. It came with a very nice medium nib, and and I later on purchased this uh, um, oblique nib that I really like in it, and I can't find the medium nib. I mean, I looked at the spot where I keep all my nibs. I actually purchased two oblique nibs at the same time, two different kinds, and uh, found the other oblique nib, but I can't find that medium nib that the pen came with originally. So, I don't know where it is. But, that's okay, because the fake is making a claim. So if we're gonna compare nibs, we don't wanna compare it to a steel nib. So according to this, this is an 18 karat gold nib. I just so happen to have one. And now you can see where the extra mass on my gold nib pen comes from. It has a model section. So we look at the gold nib here. I mean, you can just tell. Here, let's put them side by side because that's what I was meant to be doing anyway. You can just tell. Come on, autofocus, be a friend. You can just tell. I mean, they tried. The real one, everything is just so much deeper. It's also missing that emblem, which may be related to time. Uh, I think this fake um, is meant to emulate an older model, so maybe the older models had that and the newer models don't. It's hard to say. But just the quality of it. And maybe there's another test we can do. Let's just see here. So I'm going to take the nibs out. I don't recommend doing this often, but for instructional purposes, we'll do it here. Okay. Eesh. Apparently I didn't quite clean the last attempt at writing off. So, uh, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, that dip fill was not totally cleaned out. All right, well, we'll deal with it later. So we have a gold nib pat, a gold nib and a steel nib and a magnet. And magnets attract steel. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Come on. Oh, somebody likes you. I didn't even have to try. I wasn't ready yet. And just jumped on there. So the moral of this story is, it says it's gold. It doesn't even do like a lot of Chinese pens and talk about being 18 karat gold plate or anything. It just claims it's gold and um, most gold doesn't do that with a magnet. Not that I have gold around my house other than on my fountain pens, but still. So another sign that it's a fake. Now, when I go to put this nib back in, and if you look, oops, we'll put the fake on the bottom, the real one on top. On the ends of these units, the threads look a bit different. The way the nib is held on is a bit different also, but let's be fair. I've got this gold one here, so if we're going to compare like to like, I just better grab a steel nib. It does seem to be more similar to the steel nib. So, 
pretty good fake, I guess, if there is such a thing. So to insert the steel nib, we'll just push her in as far as it'll go, and then we'll see how many turns it takes. So one, two, and about three turns to get the f fake steel nib back in. To get the real old nib back in, push it in, one, okay, <laughs> we're done. End of story. Uh, now, uh, let's just take a look inside the fake before we go any further. So, let's see, one turn, two turn. Three turn, four turn, five turns, okay, little under five turns. Uh, we'll, we'll be fair and compare it to the steel one first. One turn, two turns, three turns, four turns. Four and a half. So, a few more turns. Now, uh, looking at them, again, the real one, which is on top, is a little more crisp and clean there. But if I don't have them side by side, I probably can't tell that. Another difference I see is that the real one has a slide converter, which apparently was a thing back then. Whereas the fake has a more conventional twist converter. Now if we look at the fake twist converter, it even says Parker. So they went through a lot of trouble. And then there's this ick. Well, on the gold one, which is a different animal, has a twist converter. Parker. It doesn't have the ick. Well, okay, it does, but it's hidden away. Again, that fit and finish. Uh, another thing I noticed, the fake is on the bottom, the real one's on top. The knurling on the Parker converter is very, very deep and very pronounced. Uh, it's kind of like they gave up on the fake. It's there, but it's so slight you wouldn't even notice. And same thing with the... The turning knob, fake on the bottom. The real one's just easier to grip. I was trying to be all smart by dip testing last time. I think I'm going to end up having to wash all these anyway. So one last thing I want to do is just write with them, just a little bit. This isn't really a review. This is about the fakeness of them. Um, whoops. So I just want to do a quick uh, little dip test of writing. I tried it earlier, but we'll try it again. So I've got some Parker Quink washable blue. So first we'll dip test the fake sonnet. I'll tell you the truth, it doesn't feel too bad. You know, nothing to write home about. Oh! <laughs> Which reminds me. I can barely make it out. There we go. It's hard to make out, but they got the detail of a fine nib. Now we'll go back to the gold one because the oblique is marked a little differently. See how much better the F is on the real one? And let's dip test the real one side by side here. Okay, well, for one thing, the ink wants to cling to the nib a lot more. 
Yeah, that's why it was so hard to wash out. Uh, it just uh, glides across. Oops, should be a lowercase u. Just glides across the paper a lot better. Maybe a little less line variation. Maybe a little less willingness to push it. I don't know. Um, but a very pleasant writing experience. This is a pen that could easily be my daily writer. And finally, this is going to be a different animal. Because this is an oblique nib. And when I did my first writing sample with it, with the original video, I had trouble holding it right. There, now we're on the sweet spot. Oops. Now you can see why I do that star in my rating samples now. Let's show the obliqueness. Uh, just to satisfy your curiosity, because I know you're just dying to know. The oblique just has an S on it. I don't know what the S means. Slant, probably. But it doesn't differentiate between the two different obliques, so... Hopefully, they must keep them separate at the factory somehow. So there you have it. A fake sonnet. A real sonnet with gold nib. And a real sonnet with a fun steel oblique nib. I uh, just looking around. Apparently, you can get these for like two or three dollars. Um, one of the places I saw it was like fifteen dollars shipping and handling. Um, these are quite a bit more, especially the gold one. So, if you want the sonnet experience, but not with the sonnet price. You can get in the neighborhood with this, and you're not paying for a fake. Again, we could argue about is this too close to the real thing or not. You know, that's a separate discussion. But I think if we pull this out of the picture, we've definitely got fake and real. There's not really much crossover between those lines. So I hope that was interesting and useful. Uh, the big thing I saw with these fake Parker sonnets is you don't always know uh, unless you have a real sonnet to compare it to. Um, I, I tried to give you a few things you could look at, but some of these fake sonnets apparently are very good. Um, you know, I, I would suggest buying from a reputable dealer. Uh, there, I, apparently there have been cases where even uh, good dealers have accidentally sold some fake sonnets so uh hope this helps and uh you know it is a very good pen and and, and i don't want to get into that whole discussion of again of homage versus fake versus whatever but uh i i think it's a it is a discussion worth having maybe i could do a video on that at some point um, but the fakes are a problem and if you're going to pay Parker Sonnet prices, you better get the real thing. And if the price is too good to be true, it probably is. <laughs> so, I want to thank you for watching. Um, too much wind outside for me to do an intro and outro outdoors, so uh, you got my kitchen instead. So, And I didn't feel like dragging all my equipment in here, so I did this video pretty bare bones. So, I want to thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.